caught up in he's able. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So many things you can add after you say he's able. Yeah. Amen. So I do want to thank our choir, uh, Sister Tamora Riddle, who led that, and certainly thank God for our hearts being made glad yeah. for a song of confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what that song implies that is confirming that God is able. Amen. So don't give up on him. Because I know his part. He ain't giving up on us. Uh, so I thank God today. So at this time, let's bow. God, we thank you for bringing us to where we are right now. That you will certainly use us. Give us preaching power. That your word can go forth. And certainly accomplish your purpose and bless your people. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Those that may have your uh, Bibles, I certainly would like to invite your attention to the book of 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter, uh, first chapter, uh, verses 6 and 7. And if you have it, let us uh, read. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be in much more precious than that of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'd like to just talk to you from these three words that's right there in verse 6. If need be. Amen. Amen. If need be. I do pray that at the completion of this uh, message, we will understand uh, that if need be. Because it is a very powerful text that we have before us today, and it certainly can speak to all of us who are believers in Christ Jesus. Because Peter, who we are familiar with, was one of those 12 disciples that Jesus went forth to call. He, he found Peter along with his brother Andrew, and they were already with occupation, and that was of being a fisherman. But yet Jesus, who comes to them and says to them, I have some new plans for your life. That you no longer have to be fishers of fish, but now be fishers of men. And so you know that Peter, he really was one of those who was close to his Lord. He, was more or less one who was always outspoken, uh, never afraid to, as they say, need a confrontation or never afraid to speak out. Even at times he may have said things he shouldn't have, but, but through the inspiration of God, he said some things that were certainly in line with what God wanted to be heard. And so Peter, we see in this text today, he really dwells on what we as believers at times go through. Because I know there's nobody in here who is a lover of suffering. No, no, I, I don't see no one in here today behind me or in front of me that's a lover of suffering. No, no, because it is our choice of matter. We would tell the Lord, no, don't send it this way. And, and, and when you look at this text today, it is quite clear and quite challenging that Peter is changing the tone of how we should look at suffering. It might hit me right now because I think the believer should have a different perspective. When we go through our trials, when we are faced with tribulation, when we even have to experience suffering, that there is a flip side 
in which the Lord want the believer to understand. Because why is it that Peter will start this verse by saying, wherein ye greatly rejoice? Amen. Now, now that sounds to me, in my understanding, contrary to where he's going. Because I don't see, and, and I think you would agree, how I can greatly rejoice that for a season, if need be, that I am burdened down through many types of trials. Now that's what the implication of temptation here is. It's not uh, that of being tempted, but it's really being tried and going through trials. And, and I don't see no one in here today who love to go through trials. Now, now don't fool me right now. Maybe, maybe you one of them saints who got this thing together. And, 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 and you say you can say this, bring it on. But, but, but I'm here to let us understand from what Peter is implying here that there's something we need to look at here. He says, if need be. And I look at that as if it's necessary, God is going to permit it. But what we need to get, brothers and sisters, that there's two sides of suffering. Uh, now, there is some suffering that God can allow. And there's some that the enemy is also responsible for. And I see in the text today that he is trying to, to get us to look at it from the side of God. Because that's why he says that, uh, that we can rejoice, you know, even though that for a season, that means for a little period of time, that although you might go through this, he says, if need be, I know you are in heaviness through these manifold temptations. And, and, and Peter is getting us to look at it from the standpoint that it might be necessary that God allows us to go through this. Because the, the answer is really in verse seven, the reason why if need be. Because our faith needs to be tested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is good to hear saints boast of faith. It's good to say that, that I got some faith. My faith is like no other. But is that faith still genuine when the tests come? Oh, if it, it's just lip service to, to let others hear that, yes, I'm a great person of faith. But, but, but as I say, when push comes to shove, Come and, and that's why I equate the trials with that, when push comes to shove, let's see how real your faith is. Amen. That's why he said, if need be. Because I'm looking at it now, and I thank you, Holy Ghost, for let me see it too, that there are some things God wants to happen in our lives. Yes, yes. And he does it for a reason of strengthening yes. your and my faith. Yes, yes. And how many of us want our faith increased? Yes. You ought to want your faith yes. to be stronger than it was when I first was introduced to Christ. Yes. I, I, I want faith that now is at that point where Jesus says some mountain moving faith. Yes, Lord. Amen. That if I ask it in his name, I'm just assured yes. that the Lord is going to do something. Yes, Lord. Amen. And, 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 and I see why Peter had those words there. I'm glad he was inspired to inject that in verse 6 because there's a comment right after season. You know, it, it could continue for a season, ye are in heaviness through manifold, but but it was necessary if need be in the middle. Because God wanted us to understand that there are some things that he has to let happen. Yeah. Amen. Because there's more proof in the word that there's people like Job who will tell you that I wasn't doing nothing. I was living upright. I was being good. I was doing everything that pleased God. But here it is, if need be. God said, well, I believe Job is ready to be tested. Amen. That's why I could recommend him to the devil because the devil thought he didn't know I knew Job as well as he did. And, and, and can I speak to somebody in here today? God no 
knows you yes. better than the devil does. Yes. God knows what you can take. Yes. Listen, when while the enemy is trying to prove to you that no, no, you can't take that. And if you are, what type of God are you serving? Yes. That would allow you to have an if need be in your life. Yes. Talk to me now, because yes. listen, all of us in here is in this text. Yes. Amen. Because I don't care who you are, you got your season yes. of some if need be. Yes. And I don't know what it is that God is testing you with Woo! or taking you through, but if need be, yes. the end result is that your faith yes. is going to be better coming out than it was going in. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I just believe that when God takes us through it. Yeah. And hold me, Holy Ghost. That if God takes us through this, he gonna make sure that you gonna learn something yeah. when it's all said and done. Yeah. And so I see you, Peter. I, I see why you're challenging us as believers to look at this from some different lens. Uh -huh. Amen. I, I, I know we want to look at it through these. And, and these ain't going to tell the truth all the time. They're going to see some things that's going to let your faith be weakened. Yeah. And get your focus off God. But if God is in this, yeah. listen, brothers and sisters, it's just a test of your faith. Yeah. And, 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 and isn't it wonderful to how Peter said, your faith is more precious than that of gold. Y'all yeah. yeah. know how precious gold is. Yeah. You know how valuable it is. Yeah, yeah. Some may even want to say it's priceless, but how about your faith being compared to being more precious than gold? Now, that, that's, that's hard to perceive or imagine because faith ain't much, according to some. But you know, faith is what pleases God. Because without it, you cannot please God. Without it, you can't believe that he is. Yes, yes. And that what? He's a reward to those that diligently seek him. So, so I see why Peter is bringing this to light because God wants us to value our faith. Oh, yeah. Everybody ain't here valuing your faith. Yes, yes. Everybody know that your faith is important. Yes. Your faith moves God. Yes. Your faith gets God's attention. Yes. Your faith will get some things done. Yes. It will bring answers in your life. And, and so, Lord, if need be, let it come. Yeah. Yeah. That trial that you want to take me through. Yeah. I'm not in you just testing my faith. Yes. Guess what? Even refining my faith. Yeah. I, yeah. I, because if you go on, it says, though it be tried with fire. Yeah. Amen. That means it's getting rid of, it's scheming off some stuff. Y'all yeah. 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 don't hear me? It, it, it's getting rid of some things yeah. that's hindering my faith. Yeah. So my faith can be precious. Yeah. It can be pure in the sight of God. And, and I thank you, Peter, today for reminding us that God wants to allow some things to happen in our lives yeah. to make us better. As y'all know, that's all he's doing. He's working on us yeah. to make us better. Yeah. Amen. We ain't what we should be. But thank God. Yes, somebody. We ain't what we used to be. Amen, because the whole house is full of used to be. Yeah. Amen, yeah. somebody. Yeah. But listen, hallelujah to the Lamb that yeah. we've been changed. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and you got to appreciate what Peter is challenging us with because he wants us to see that, yes, we're going to be sometimes burdened with many types of trials. Yeah. But don't take it personal. Well, I got news for somebody. You ain't by yourself. You got somebody sitting beside you that might be in a trial. They just ain't told you about it. But they might be going through the fire. Amen. And, 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 and wonder, Lord, how long am I going to stay here? But aren't you glad if need be? Amen. It's for the purpose of our faith being most stronger. And I'm glad that, that, that Peter makes it plain here because he said, your faith being more precious than that of gold, it perishes. And how about that? You know gold perishes? Yes, it does. 
But do anybody believe it's everlasting? Do it? It has an eternal value. No, it perishes. But what about your faith? Amen. Somebody catch, catch it right there. Come on. Your faith won't perish. Listen, if God has tested it enough, and he has refined it, he has made it genuine faith, then that is some faith that's going to last even the test of time. And that's why I'm glad that that Peter lets us see today, brothers and sisters, that when it's all said and done, our faith ought to be praised. Yes. It's right there in the text. He says, praise and honor and glory yes. at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, do anybody want Jesus to commend you yes. about how your faith was yes. so great? Yes. How you still believed and trusted me yes. when you didn't know your way out? Yes. But it's good that Peter presents this today because he gives us a different perspective on suffering. Because some of us think that when it comes that, oh, woe is me. Amen. How am I going to make it? But do you not see that it's God trying to test your faith? And one thing that I love about the Lord, he don't ask us, is it okay to test us? Did anybody hear me? He just brings the test along. Because he knows you are in a position where your faith is now ready to be challenged. And I don't know about you today. I thank God that he can think that much of us. Because when I think again about Job, it was only because God considered his servant. And I wonder today, does anybody know that God can do the same? Yes, sir. He can consider you for the test. Yes, yes, and the reason is because you trusted in him. Yes. You believed in him. Yes, you had faith in him. Yes, you had faith to believe that my God is able. Yes. Amen. To see me through. Yes. So my brothers and my sisters, don't cause it to be an alarm if a need be comes in your life. You need to thank God that it was necessary because God knew the outcome just like he knew the start. But our problem is that we don't know the outcome. Amen. But we got to have faith in God and understand that it's only for a season. Do anybody know that trouble don't last always? Uh, that trouble got to soon move on. Uh, the trouble got to meet his end. Uh, because God wants to challenge his people. Uh, and let them recognize you got more faith uh, than you might ever acknowledge. Uh, anybody here today uh, realize you got more faith uh, than you may never admit. Because God knows you. Wow. He put that faith in you yeah. wow. to believe who he is, yeah. wow. to believe that he's able, wow. that he knows what you go through. Wow. Anybody glad today yeah. that we serve a God wow. yeah. who is an able God, wow. a God who cares about yeah. us, wow. a God that will keep us, wow. a God that will see us through. Yeah. Wow. So sometimes in our lives, wow, there might be a moment, wow, if need be, uh, that we might have to go through uh, an ordeal, uh, go through a trial, uh, go through a test. Uh, but the good thing is this, uh, where is your faith? Uh, is it in the problem? Uh, is it in the outcome? Uh, or is it in God? Uh, of an Abraham, uh, he's an example for us. Uh, God tested uh, even his faith. Uh, and I know y'all know the story. Uh, he gave him a son. Uh, amen. At a great old age. Uh, but God came one day uh, to test Abraham. Uh, he said, that son uh, that you love, uh, that son uh, who's the promised seed, uh, that son uh, who's your only begotten son, uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, in fact, I'm going to tell you uh, that I want 
want you uh, to take him now uh, and sacrifice him uh, unto me. Uh, so Abraham, uh, nowhere in that text, uh, you see him saying, Lord, uh, do you really mean this? Uh, you got to be uh, making a mistake. Uh, I wanted this son. Uh, I waited for this son uh, for many years. Uh, but you telling me, Lord, uh, I want your son uh, as a sacrifice. Uh, so Abraham, uh, who was a man of faith, uh, a man that was being tested, uh, a man that knew his God. Uh, but let me put a pin right there. Uh, if you ain't afraid uh, of the text, uh, the reason why, uh, because you know your God, uh, you know your God uh, won't set you up uh, for so you to fail. Uh, you know your God uh, won't set you up uh, to be defeated. Uh, but your God uh, know that you will trust in Him. Uh, if you believe in Him, uh, He will see you through. Uh, I believe you know the rest of the story. Uh, Abraham did. Uh, what the Lord said. Uh, he said, yes, son. Uh, took him up the hill. Uh, build the altar. Uh, put wood on the altar. Uh, Lay the sun on the altar. Uh, took your knife in his hand. Uh, got ready to slay him. Uh, but the angel of the Lord uh, don't harm his son. Uh, look over there. Uh, look over there. Uh, because of your faith. Uh, I put a ram uh, in the thicket. Uh, because of your faith. Uh, there's a real sacrifice. Oh, 
the word of God. If I can touch Someone here that might be in the house, if they feel the need, they want to come. 